In this lecture, I'll talk about the software requirements of this project course. All of the software that we'll use in this project is open source and free in terms of monetary cost. Online services like Google Sheets and If This and That are also free of charge, but not open source. So let's take a closer look. The software component that consists of the brain of the project is Node-RED. Node-RED is a powerful graphical programming environment. It's built on Node.js, a JavaScript framework from where it got its name. Node-RED is very good in enabling hardware devices, small and large, APIs and all kinds of online services to work together. Node-RED is bundled in the Raspbian operating system, even in the light version that we'll be using. However, I'll show you how to install a fresh copy so that you can start the project with the latest available version. Although we'll be using the ESP32 to implement the hardware part of the Terrarium controller, I've decided to use the Arduino IDE as a development environment for the sketch. I chose this as opposed to Platform I.O. that I used in my course ESP32 Unleashed because the sketch that we'll develop is actually fairly simple. The Arduino IDE is perfectly suitable and capable for what we are working towards here and is definitely allowing us to progress at a faster pace as opposed to using a more featureful IDE. To keep a fast pace, I'm not showing how to set up the Arduino IDE to work with the ESP32. You can learn how to do this by reviewing the relevant lectures in ESP32 for busy people, or check out the relevant free guide on the Tech Explorations website. And you can see the URL for that guide below the image in this slide. The default operating system for the Raspberry Pi is the Raspberry Pi OS. This used to be known as Raspbian until recently. We won't be doing much at the operating system level other than running the necessary services such as SSH, Node-RED and the MQTT Mosquito Broker. I'll show you how to install the operating system and set up those services. Node-RED is the brain of our Terrarium controller and MQTT is the glue. MQTT makes it possible for the software components to communicate with each other. Eclipse Mosquito is an open source EPL and EDL licensed message broker that implements the MQTT protocol versions 5, 3.1.1 and 3.1. Mosquito is lightweight and is suitable for use on all devices from low power single board computers to full servers. MQTT is a way of messaging that allows clients to talk to each other using the publish and subscribe model. Of course, there are many open source implementations of the MQTT protocol and any of them should work equally well in this project. There are no specific requirements that we have here that makes Mosquito better than other options. But in this project, I have chosen to use the MQTT Mosquito Broker because it's well documented and mature and also comes with convenient publish and subscribe tools that we can use for testing apart from the broker itself. To make this project a true IoT project, I decided to make use of online cloud resources and services. There are many excellent options out there, so I wanted to make use of services that are genuine representatives of what is available to make us today. Most such services are not open source, but are free of charge, at least at a basic level, which is all we need. The first cloud application that I wanted to use is Google Sheets. It's possible to use Google Sheets via a specialized API. Because Google Sheet is integrated with Google Drive, we also need to make use of the Google Drive API. The main challenge to use Google Sheet is the security and authentication mechanism, which requires the creation of certificates and keys. This is a common and very secure way to getting access to online resources. And I'll show you exactly how to do this. We'll use Google Sheet to log data from the Terrarium controller sensors and actuators, but you can use the same techniques to access any of the many other Google services. If this and that is the leading platform for bringing together hundreds of registered services and using them in virtually any way you want. I'll be using if this and that to send me notifications when the voltage level of the ESP32 battery drops below a certain threshold, but that is just one simple example. You can do much more. 
For example, you can use if this and that to automatically make an entry in your calendar to remind you to charge the terrarium battery or to replenish the water reservoir. You can use Amazon Alexa to set up voice commands or alerts and that's just scratching the surface. If this and that is an amazing tool and in this project I'll show you how to easily integrate it to your node red flow. As with Google services, if this and that is not open source, but you can use it free of charge. There are various other software components that we'll use in this project. For example, there are libraries for the ESP32 and the Arduino IDE, such as the task scheduler library, which allows us to schedule specific things to happen on the ESP32 that follow a specific schedule. There are also node red node libraries that we'll be installing and using. As with the Arduino, there are thousands of contributors who have written thousands of node red nodes and even complete flows, and they are sharing those with other makers so that we can integrate them to our projects. And that's about it. Now let's move on to the next lecture where I'll talk about the required hardware. <laughs>